Oh! <laughs> Did you watch Kevin Samuel's show last night? Where he asked, how much does a man need to earn for your submission? <laughs> man, I was watching the NBA playoffs last night. You know, I think it was Golden State and, and Denver was on. And I'm watching the game and you know, I'm looking at the box scores and I'm in this group chat and I'm talking about the game and I go to YouTube just to see you know, what pops up and I saw Kevin Samuels li live stream and I go, holy shit. He's finally st starting to talk about submission. Well, good for him. I'm glad that's what he's doing. And so I go to the YouTube live stream and I go, well, let me go ahead and listen to this while I'm watching the game. So I'm watching the game. I pop my earpiece into my ear and and I'm listening to this live stream while I'm watching the game. And basically, he asked he asked a real ass question. How much is it gonna how much does a man need to earn for you to submit? And what I heard was a lot of twisting and turning and ducking and dodging. You know, like when George Bush, I think it was in his he was in his last term, or maybe it was after the election, and he was at this press conference, and that dude, remember, he took off his shoe and he threw his shoe at uh, George W. the dumb Bush when he was president, and and then he took off his other shoe, and so George ducks to the left, and the guy pick, you know picks up his other shoe and throws, it, and then he ducks to the right. <laughs> well, that's what the women on his show last night were doing. They were ducking left and right. It was it was hilarious the way they were ducking these questions. They really I don't know if any of them really gave a concrete answer. And I think that Kevin did a masterful job of formulating that question and articulating that question because it really holds up a mirror to the gynocracy and modern women and these women squirm and didn't I tell you that's exactly what women do when you when as a man particularly as a black man and you tell them you tell women what you want you tell women what you require you tell women what you need and you lay down the law and saying this, ex this is exactly what it is. This is how it is over here. And I'm not budging off this square. And you just sit back and you just look at their face. You watch their body language. And you listen to them and you start to see them squirm. And the women on the show last night were squirming. So much so that Kevin Samuels even said, he goes, notice how these women squirm. Yeah, it's called the squirms. That's what they do. And... What I want you to realize is that they're getting the squirms, not because the question's so tough. I mean, that's part of it, but it's more than that. When you see the squirms in these women, it's because you've got them thinking about their own thinking in ways that they've never done before, and they're uncomfortable. So it's not necessarily just them being uncomfortable, but they're uncomfortable in ways that they've never really discovered before. And they're not going to come out and go, damn, Kev, you hit me, hit me with this real ass question. And I don't know how to answer. I'm feeling some type of way up about this. This has got me uncomfortable. Nah, nah, homie. They ain't going to say that. That's not what, what they're going to say. What they're going to say is, uh, um, well, uh, let me put it this way. And, and they'll make these faces and contort their bodies and they'll start to squirm because you've got them thinking about their own thinking. It's called metacognition. And then when they're thinking about their own thinking about you, man, that's real tough because if they want to stay in your good graces and they want to stay, they want you to see them in a positive light, then now they're going to have to speak in these measured words where they really don't know what they think or how they think about something, but then they don't want to come out there and look dumb or say something ignorant. So instead of just saying, well, I really can't answer that question, right? They don't want to get kicked off the show. So then they just offer the mumbo jumbo, right? They just offer this, these uh, watered down, you know, duck, just ducking and dodging these questions. It's just watered down answers. And that's what you got out of this whole live stream. Now, I didn't listen to the whole thing, but I listened to most of it. And what I heard from the women was nothing but watered down, shallow answers because they didn't want none. They didn't want no parts of the, those interviews that he gave last night. And that should be a lesson to black men in itself that if a woman can't answer those questions or keep her back straight while you're talking about exactly what you need, want, and require, and you lay down the law, 
and she starts squirming and oh mom and i don't know what to think about that man leave kick that girl to the curb man she can't do nothing for you she's not built right she's not built to win she's not built for the family structure that a black man should require for himself so let them chicks hit, hit the door homie let them go just let them go and then i'm looking at the numbers here and you know i don't you know i don't keep up on on his numbers or whatever but i'm looking he only had 147,000 views based off this video and usually videos like this these long live streams that he that he has are getting all, almost all of them maybe all of them are upwards of over 200,000 250 300 400,000 some have a million views and so you know by the time i took the screenshot here it wasn't even 24 hours after the live stream so you know maybe those of course those numbers are going to grow but i think they're on the lower end i think this video is going to be on the lower end of a lot of his live streams and that tells me something <laughs> what cam starts talking about submission and talking about what a man requ requ requires bottom line like bottom line requirement you got to be submissive how much is it going to take and what do you know what that what i'm learning from that these black folks don't want no part to that. No, 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 no. We're going to keep your, your numbers low on this, man. I don't know if I would have listened to this one because many of us, I think a lot of black men aren't comfortable laying down the law for themselves. And then a lot of women aren't, aren't used to men, particularly black men, laying down the law and telling it how it is. So that's, to me, I, I believe that's why he's got low numbers. Now, maybe over time, We'll see. I'll come back and we'll check this and, you know, in 30 days and see how those numbers have grown on this video compared to the rest of them. But, you know, to me, it just looks like black culture, right? Because black culture is a subset of American culture and American culture damn sure doesn't want black men laying down the law, talking about ex our experiences, talking about how other individuals shape our experience experiences, both good and bad. So they want black men just to shut the hell up and say, man, you need to, black man, please shut the hell up. Please don't talk that talk. You make me uncomfortable. You give me the squirms. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a lot of non-black people who get the squirms when black people start talking that talk. Well, black culture is a subset of, of American culture. And a lot of black men and a lot of black women don't like to hear black men lay down the law either. And that's why, frankly, that's why Kevin Samuels has such low numbers on this video because it seems it's so counterculture. Who are you, nigga, to be saying you require a submissive wife and you know you're gonna you got the nerve to ask a woman how much is it gonna cost for her submission? That's sexism. You can't say that you can't ask that question. How dare you, you uppity nigga? <laughs> that's how a lot of people think. That's how a lot of black folks think about black folks. And that's some wild ass internalized white supremacy. But you go ahead, Kev. Kevin Samuels, you go ahead and keep doing your thing and keep laying down the law. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to always get it right. But it's clear that you're doing your best. You speak in a measured way so you don't burn what you built down and you're taking your time using the drip method and it's clear that your heart's in the right place. You love black men. You love black family. You love the idea and the concept of a of the black family being restored. It's clear you like lining your pockets with money too. And I'm here, here all for it. I'm here to support you in all that, Kev. So fuck them haters. Fuck them haters. Keep doing you because this is really, this is real red pill, black pill, manosphere content that you're laying down right here, homie. And I love it, man. I appreciate you, Kev. And I appreciate you. Now, as black men, I think, you know, as black men, I think we need to internalize and adopt this idea and this concept, this modality of requiring submissive women for ourselves. No requiring submissive wives for ourselves and just like create a new cultural landscape for ourselves because the way culture works is a culture is going to remain the same it's not going to change unless something impacts it and makes it moves off course so this is why you can have a religion you know you have judaism 
Christianity. You've got Muslim religions. You've got these Abrahamic religions that are thousands and thousands of years old. And they, you know, and they change over time. They do change, but they don't change that much. And the only time they change is when something comes off, comes out, and then hits this culture and impacts it and redirects it, redirects it a different direction. Right? Cultural inertia. That's really what that is. And the black manosphere is that cultural inertia where black men are saying, here's the culture. This is the gynocracy. This is the black family structure. This is how black women see black men. This is how they treat black men. This is how the gynocracy builds the black family structure at the detriment of black men. And we don't like none of this. We don't like the way it's going. So we are going to do something about it. And this cultural inertia uh, is being redirected because of the black manosphere. So, so part of this cultural inertia, right, is, is or redirecting this inertia and the culture is black men requiring a submissive wife for ourselves. I don't think we should have any qualms, no issues, no problems with just adopting that for ourselves. And all the, this feeling of, well, I don't feel comfortable saying it and I don't know how people, other people are gonna react. Fuck your feelings, fuck them feelings. Your feelings are wrong and leading you astray black man anything that's new the first time you get on stage and do stand-up comedy the first time you know you go to football practice you're gonna be a little bit nervous you can drop some some balls you know you, you layup lines you miss a layup you tell it you know you bomb your first time doing stand-up comedy because you're a rookie you don't have experience it takes time you got these butterflies so it's supposed to feel uncomfortable at first but then over time slowly over time and it might not take that much time but sooner or later it's no longer going to feel uncomfortable because you've practiced it you've immersed yourself in this culture of ex of demanding requiring and being vocal about it i need a submissive wife i want a submissive girlfriend i want a best friend and a wife and a partner and a significant other who's submissive and that's just how it is when black, <laughs> if black men could do that, if, if we could get even a hundred black men in the black manosphere to start talking about submissive women, submissive wives, that would create a thousand men talking about submissive men, submissive women and submissive wives. And it would just grow exponentially. So just set that, set that mountain on fire, one man at a time. And pretty soon we built a new culture for ourselves. And even better, a new cultural expectation where everybody knows what the what is. You don't even come at black men with any type of disrespect because you know what we require. And the thing is, black man, the thing is when people realize what your baseline requirement is and you go like, if you don't come at me on this level and you come at me with any less than this, then I, it's looking to me like you're coming at me with disrespect. And if you come out with me with disrespect, you know how we handle that. And when people realize that's your baseline requirement, oh, what happens is they start to acquiesce to those requirements and they come to the table and they come to the door with exactly what you want. You don't even have to say anything because your reputation precedes you. So when I watch this video with Kevin Samuels asking, how much does a man need to earn for your submission? Yeah, it's a screwball question. Kev knows that. He knows that's not that's not really how you want to phrase it, but because it's like a starter question. You put that seed into the ground and that earth starts to heat up that seed. The sun hits the earth, the earth heats up the seed, and then it starts to germinate. And then it starts to sprout out and, and the leaves, you know, the little little leaves start to spread out from the ground and then it gets more water and then more sun and all of a sudden it just grows and grows. And now all of a sudden you've got this organism that's strong, that's got strong roots and it starts to spread. Well, that's like ideas and con concepts. That's what propaganda is. That's what mimetic warfare is. And that's what the black manosphere is. It's planting ideas in people's minds and then letting them grow.